I'm Natasha Payne. I was born on the 8th of May 1963. Looking back on life, I would say life goes in chapters. And then something will change it to the next chapter for some reason. When, when you're born a boy, you're expected to go and do boys' things and get married, have kids and provide for a family and go to work. And that's what's programmed for you, really, from beginning to end. Well, I always wanted to be a marine engineer. Something to do if I always tried to work out with stuff, how work, things worked. I mean, I was actually, as a child, I actually used to live in the factory. It taught me a lot about how things work and even how the world works to that extent. I did different <coughs> things if you put the Navy into a, a generalisation because I worked for different bits at different times and did different things. I was in Jordan, Italy. Djibouti was a strange place. A bit of a French enclave on the end of Africa. Yugoslavia, I ended up in the middle of a war there. Fortunately, I ended up there at the end of it. But um, that's probably the most scary place I went to. I probably was at sea two years, but you can't do much. You've got to make your own entertainment and keep yourself busy. The nearest thing I can probably describe to it is a, is a self-imposed prison sentence. became divorced during that time but you know life's got its chapters as I say one thing ends another thing starts I did get married again but it, it definitely didn't work second time around the first time around was slightly different there was other reasons but um you know my first wife I you know I get on with her I still talk to her you know things changed and circumstances changed and that sort of thing um, the second one, just basically, she wasn't my friend. It got a point where I got in a position, when I spit up my second wife, that I thought, right, okay, if I'm, because I did get it, I did blatantly get um, bullied because of it at times, and I just thought no one's going to do it anymore. I'm just me now. Well, if, if someone doesn't like me, then they don't have to talk to me. If they do, then that's fine. And I, thought, I can't be bothered all this hiding business and keeping it quiet. And I've known about being female since I was four years old. I've known all the way through. It's just I tried to live how other people expected me to live. Mm. And it doesn't... Well, I suppose you can suppress it all your life, but... So you've always got this unhappy feeling or something in, in there that's bugging the life out of you every day. Immediate family, not a problem, as in son, my partner and whatever. Because um, my partner met me anyway, you know, slightly afterwards. Um, cousins, fine. Uncles and aunties, not fine. Parents, totally not fine. Don't get me wrong, I do see them, I do talk to them, I do go and see them, but they hate it when I do. If you actually tried to do it in 1960s, whatever, they'd have thought you were not. They'd have put you in a mental hospital. Um, and they had various means of trying to change you. As the 1970s went on, probably because of the gay rights movement and all that as well, um, which is a different issue, but we tend to get put under the same thing. Um, obviously, that became more aware by society and things started to change in that direction. I personally noticed changes probably within the 1990s. Um, if I wanted a night out looking as female, there were places I could go. Um, and I did. Um, Probably later 1990s, it changed even further. Um, about 97, 98, somewhere around there. Um, and then, then you've got the Equal Rights Act and stuff that they've brought in since, and you know, just recently, or you know, in 2000 or whenever it was, 1999, um, which gives us the right to be who we are. Um, I believe that was something to do with the EU, actually. That, but. Um, we had to adopt it, um, which gave people probably like me a chance to have an identity and chance to be who I am and in theory get protected under the same sorts of laws as racism and whatever. Um, 
so if anyone does technically you know give us abuse or something you could have them arrested but i don't tend to not unless anyone's very seriously stupid <laughs> you know you've got to you've got to have a sense of humor you can find some people that are how can i put it set in the fact that they're sort of against what i am yeah if you actually sit down and talk to them i've known some very hard-minded people who've actually changed their mind and they've actually come back to me at a later date and said do you know what you're actually a really nice person and i'm really really sorry i felt that way about how you are and i mean i'm talking people who used to work at work in shipyards and stuff like that you know pretty sort of men's men that say no we actually respect you now because you're honest i've got friends who are like me um, some of them started changing when they were quite young. Um, that's probably the one that's got who I get the biggest reservations from, actually. Because she actually said to me one day, do you ever, ever look in the mirror and think you're still a boy? I said, no. I never get up in the morning and think that. Well, I do, she said. I said, well, what? why? I said, I wouldn't have made, that, made my decision if I ever thought I was going to think that. The minute you make a decision to walk out the outdoor like this, you've got to make a decision to do it every day. Mm. So you, you, you've got to be pretty strong-minded about you want to do it. Because um, you've got to decide that that's you for the rest of your life. It's not easy. Some people get extremely lonely because they've not got friends, they've not got anything that they do or anything like that. You have to get out there and do stuff. You have to have female friends. I got into pole dancing because I couldn't do some other sort of dancing. I got recommended to do it by the person who owned the dance school at the time. And uh, I was a bit sceptical about doing it, just as the usual oh, reputation that you get, yeah. Um, it's moved on from there. When I originally did it, I didn't even know competitions existed. It, it, I don't even know how I found out about my first competition. Um, but it was one in Newcastle called Pole Princess. And I somehow found out about it. No one in my dance school at that time knew about it. I decided I went with it, and so I did. I come second. <laughs> what is a routine? Well, it's basically a set of moves on, on a pole. Um, gymnastic um, routines have got set moves. You have to do them to get your points to win the competition. So it's typically like gymnastics that you would see for the Olympics or Commonwealth Games. or It's got them sort of disciplines and everything you do is being marked by points. Um, general competitions, moves will be marked or noted towards marks, but there'll be dance things, your costume will come into it, um, how you move, how it's constructed and choreographed to come into it. Um, so there's a lot more of a general sort of marking across the range on that. Um, best I've ever done is second. Um, I've never got a first yet. Um, which was Pole Princess. I've done that a second twice. I've done the Mature Cup twice. The World Championship, I got the Bronze Medal. Um, i trying to think where else. I've, oh, Edinburgh. I got the Bronze for Edinburgh. So it's normally second or third or something like that. Next year, I'm not allowed in the female category. The Olympic will say you've got to compete as what you were born as. It's fun, you know, it's, it's my thing I do, it's my hobby. And yes, I do make a lot of friends who are dancing all over the place, all around the world, which is another good thing. And if you could say one thing to anybody that's in a similar situation to what you've been in, what would that be? Quite simply, be yourself. Because you won't be happy until you are.